Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where check this out. The new Ford Mustang GTD. Now I've known this was coming for a while. This dial for the Mustang up a notch or two. We're talking transaxle, over 800 horsepower, the road homologated car to go back racing at the 24 hours of Le Mans. Look at how wide it is. Look at how mean the aero is. Come further down past these massive arches. Back here, we have an enormous rear wing. In fact, this rear wing has DRS, it's mounted out of the rear window. The exhaust down there at the back is monstrous as well. It's running magnesium wheels, exceptionally wide cut to our tires as well. And today we're here at an event to launch the car at Monterey Car Week to take a first look. Now, of course, it's busy in here. We've got the lighting going on for the atmosphere, but I want to run you through everything we know so far about this new car and then talk a little bit about whether one of these should become a future Shmimobile, the new Ford Mustang GTD. Here it is then in all its glory, the new Ford Mustang GTD. Now I've heard whisperings that this was coming over the last six to 12 months, and here it is now unveiled. We're at a customer preview evening ahead of the Quail, where it's making its global debut out here in California during Monterey Car Week. The Quail is becoming quite the hotspot for the launch of some seriously special machines, and this is right up there. The GTD stands for Grand Touring Daytona. Consider it a road homologation special to return to the 24 hours of Daytona race, along with the 24 hours of Le Mans and even more. You'll have to excuse the slightly peculiar lighting, of course, the customer event this evening and an opportunity for us to take a first look at this beastly thing based on the latest generation Ford Mustang. Now in its seventh iteration, the S650, but with some fairly significant changes. Of course, the same chassis, but but now with a transaxle gearbox, the gearbox being in the back, that gives the car a 50-50 weight distribution. We've got a new hydraulic suspension system. We've obviously got completely different bodywork, the active aerodynamics, the massive wing at the rear. No doubt it's going to sound immense as well. At this moment in time, we haven't heard production numbers, but I would expect a couple of thousand, likely two or 3,000 cars. No word on pricing either, but again, potentially in the $300,000, $350,000 region. We'll have to wait to see how cars will be allocated and how exactly that process is going to be managed. But when you look at this thing, up close it is so aggressive and so phenomenally cool the fact that this as a 2025 model year or late 2024 exists is just epic I think it's safe to say now as somebody who has seriously enjoyed the previous generation Mustang many miles in my Shelby GT500 carbon fiber track pack and also enjoyed almost five years of ownership of the Ford GT you can imagine this is right up my street I have been following the story closely and now we have the car now we have this crazy thing and there's a lot for us to go and take a look at by way of examples and different parts of the car itself here as well but let's start with a more close walk around to talk about some of the design details and features the entire bodywork of the Mustang GTD is made from carbon fiber of course significantly helping with weight along with the magnesium wheels now I believe these are standard but more on those in just a moment because I am fascinated by the choice of tires and the width selection that they've got for. Now, of course, carbon body panels helps in a very big way, but being based on the S650 platform, it's not the lightest of cars to begin with, and it's certainly disadvantaged by the width of the bodywork, things like that wing that's active at the back, and plenty more elements that are going on. We do have a rear seat delete, so it remains to be seen what the final weight of the car will be. To talk about the body and the design, it's distinctly Mustang, it's a distinct Mustang shape, but my goodness, is it different. We'll start at the headlights, those yellow eyebrows over the triple lights on each side, the horse in the center of the front grille, the hood latches as we saw on the GT500 for the carbon fiber bonnet. Down below, this incredibly extended front splitter, the flicks that wrap around the side, of course, all helping with downforce and with aero. In fact, active aero front and rear to work in harmony as well. The wheels, we need to go onto these. Look at the design that they've gone for with these. In some ways, it's a bit of a throwback style design. I thought maybe they'd go for a carbon wheel, but we've got them fitted up front with a three 325 
20 inch Cup 2R tyre at the front, 345 at the rear. Those numbers are enormous. Of course, contained within, we have some serious stopping power thanks to the brakes back there as well. But it's when you start to look at all of this, look at these blades running over the arch, look at how much opening there is there for the airflow management coming through, even down below these side skirts sticking boldly out towards the side as well. You've got some unusual vents back here. Of course, no engine, but helping with cooling, no doubt towards the gearbox, the brakes, and helping with air management as well. We've got these lines that are familiar from Mustang cars, but as we come towards the back, even more openings up here on the rear deck, akin to, say, a 911 when you have an engine in the back for helping with airflow through, and of course, everything that's going on with this. And this wing is quite something. Very aggressive end plates, lots of adjustability. The DRS that changes the top level, that opens it up to help with the drag reduction system, going faster down the straights, for example, at the press of a button, reducing the drag that in turn helps with aero and downforce in the corners. At the back of the car, we've got the familiar shape of the new generation Mustang, the Dark Horse, for example. Very open grill back here. More cooling, you can see, with the radiators inside and an Akrapovich exhaust system. Titanium exhaust back here. Two very large exhaust tailpipes sitting more centrally in the bodywork within the diffuser. In fact, just talking about the diffuser, look at the shapes, look at the lines down here. Then look at that arch. Look how wide it is out from the bodywork, from the doors, which are no doubt in a familiar position to the regular road cars. This thing is seriously mean. Now, there have been no words yet on the powertrain, but of course, the regular Mustang has the 5-litre NAV8, even in the new generation. I would expect that this is going to be based around an engine like that of the GT500, the 5.2-litre supercharged V8. We know it's going to be pushing out over 800 horsepower. We know it has an 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. The transaxle setup gearbox towards the back, that gives it the 50-50 weight distribution that's going to dynamically push this into a completely different league when compared to the previous generation. It will be based on the interior of the S650. We're talking the large digital screens. Yes, a lot of talk about quite how many of them there are, but look at the shape of this. Look at how angry it is. Look at how wide it is. Look at how mean it is. The more time I spend looking at it, every single thing about this car just looks immense. I can only begin to imagine what driving it on a track will be, but I want to show you some of the components. So let's go and take a look at those. I'm always fascinated by some of the exhibits that you often get to see at these events to understand more of what's going on underneath the surface of the car and I apologize for the incredibly harsh lighting but when walking into the room the car itself was in fact covered but these parts were open giving us an opportunity to get a little insight as to what it was about and of course seeing that this is a transaxle configuration gearbox with some very clever bracketry to hold it in place and not what you normally see in a Mustang. Gearbox would typically be on the back of the engine up front. Obviously this giving away the new configuration. Then over here, take a look at the suspension. Check this out. Working again with Multimatic as with the Ford GT, there are going to be multiple different suspension setups in this. It takes 10 seconds to change from one through to the other to have it more dynamic for the track, a much stiffer setup. But this onboard suspension system is a work of art to behold. Just looking through the components here, seeing the setup and of course appreciating exactly what this is going to be like to drive. This is not normal. They've done some very, very clever things with this car. A lot of work to engineer it, to pull it together, to make it happen. And we're just being able to touch on the surface at the moment, waiting for a first opportunity to drive it and find out even more. I have to quickly show you this as well when we arrived here, this signboard. Nürburgring, Gaiden, Stuttgart and Maranello. A nod towards Porsche and Manta Racing at the Nürburgring. Aston Martin at Gaydon, Mercedes in Stuttgart, and Ferrari in Maranello. Of course, ready to go to the racetrack and take on some of the big names. It's time, the end of the evening, the car is being covered to be taken over to the Quail. I do, however, also have what's in here to show you as well, which is quite fun. A little gift that actually confirms some few, a few extra bits of information that we didn't know before. Um, it's a book with some carbon fiber, obviously giving us a big hint as to what exactly is within Monterey Peninsula, where the car has been introduced and very much telling us about how this was really developed in a uh, small area unknown to the entire team and what it's about. And this is quite fun. There actually are some more bits of info. So we have the multi-link short long arm front suspension. We have the horizontally mounted damper system. 
And I want to keep coming through. Eight-speed dual clutch, carbon ceramic brakes, racing tires and magnesium wheels, aerodynamics. This is an overview of the carbon fiber parts of the bodywork. So you can see the front bumper, the hood, the wings, front and rear, the spoiler, the roof of the car is carbon fiber. The doors are a carryover from the regular car. And that's one of the things that gives it that consistency. We've got the active rear spoiler, the solid extruded and lightweight aluminum stanchions, active aero wing, Keep going through we do have confirmation of the engine it is a 5.2 liter supercharged v8 that will make 800 plus horsepower revving to more than 7500 rpm and have the available titanium active valve exhaust system so no doubt that's what we've seen on this car but these types of bits of information and keepsakes are just mega carbon fiber body panels state-of-the-art suspension active aerodynamics supercharged v8 eight-speed dct magnesium wheels titanium exhaust carbon ceramic brakes targeting more than 800 horsepower and a sub seven minute Nürburgring time in a Ford Mustang. Sub seven minutes at the Nürburgring Nordschleife is um, really quite something as I struggle to unfold this. That is something I will keep very safe because you never know, one of these might become a Schmiemobile. I need to find out exactly how that whole process is going to work. But obviously really quite excited about the prospect that it could happen. I think this is more or less our sign to start packing up and heading on out, but even under the cover, it looks so good. Massive, massive wing. I mean, just look at the size of that thing, almost protruding out of the bodywork. Of course, following regulations in terms of being a road legal vehicle, and I believe these are going to be coming to Europe and other parts of the world as well. That's going to be quite exciting, considering that this type of car doesn't really exist all that much anymore. With the big shift towards electric, this is a massive, kind of let's do it with a V8. I can't really imagine anything better. In fact, I am very, very excited to even get to drive a GTD at some point in the future. Perhaps I expected it might have a new name akin to the Dark Horse being the ultimate Mustang GT. In the case of this though, GTD makes a lot of sense considering the racing ambitions. The car is actually four inches, over 10 centimeters wider than the standard Mustang GT, which is hardly a narrow car to begin with. And obviously like this, the very distinct vents that you have up on the hood, this line that wraps all the way around the front and those arches just protruding so far out to the side of the car's bodywork. This has been a bit of a sneak preview. We're going to see plenty more of this as well at the Quail and going forwards from there. I guess that's our signal to start wrapping up for the day with excessive traffic outside. It took a long time to get here, but we've had a first look at the new Mustang GTD. And I tell you what, in a garage with the Ford GT, the Shelby GT500, the Ford Focus RS Heritage Edition, my new Mustang Dark Horse, which is due imminently, plus the Ford Transit Custom MSRT that we have back at home and there might be another Ford that I haven't really spoken all that much about yet not one of these I have to say at this point but I tell you what it would be cool wouldn't it I feel like this is a car that you can go to a track and it will match your GT3 RS's your AMG GT Black Series your other incredible track orientated supercars that come from motorsport from being homologation cars from being cars that are made to bring that to the street as this is but also to use it, to actually go and drive it. The GT500 has been such a great car for touring, luggage space, comfort, technology, equipment, everything that you want. And this, while being very, very wide, just dials all of that up even more, just takes it even further than ever before. So you can bet if one of these can become a Schmiemobile, I'm gonna do everything I can to make that happen. It would be phenomenal. It's been super exciting to see it. As I said, I've known about it in production or in the works for quite a while. And now it's here, the new Ford Mustang GTD. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look. The car is clearly heading over to the Quail. We will no doubt get an opportunity to see it again very soon, but that's it for this time. Thank you very much for your support as always, guys. I appreciate it an awful lot and stay tuned for plenty more from Monterey Car Week 2023. That's it though, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.